Hello again everyone, welcome back to the channel, this is Comic Kid here again, and today we will be reviewing the all-new McFarlane uh, DC Multiverse Superman. This is part of the very first wave of McFarlane products under the DC license, and Superman came out along with a bunch of others. Um, I plan on getting the whole line eventually, with the exception of maybe the Arrow figure and the uh, animated DC ones, just because I have a few of them already. Uh, but unfortunately, the Superman one was the only comic book one that my Walmart had at the time. But I am still looking, and I plan on uh, doing a video for more and more as they come in eventually. Uh, but this is him for the time being. Uh, as you can see, it's, this is going to be the brand new standard packaging for the McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. And based on packaging alone, I'm actually already kind of impressed. It's a sleek new design, super basic, it's a nice big window there, you can see everything inside. It's got a lot of really cool comic art in the back. Um, and on the back... We have the Jim Lee uh, Action Comics 1000 Superman. This is apparently what this figure was based on. And then you can see everything else, uh, or not everything else, but a few other figures in the wave down there as well. So, yeah, uh, that's about it as far as packaging. Um, and we will go ahead and bust into them. Alrighty, here he is out of the box and packaging and all that. He does have two additional hands down here. I'm not sure why they left one hand a little bit more open and then provided a closed fist on his left side. Not really sure why they did that, but it, it's okay. Uh, I feel like if anything they could have provided a set of these and a set of fisted hands as well, but that's besides the point. And then he does come with a trading card. I believe all the McFarlane ones will come with something like that, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. And then he does come with a additional stand over here, which is nice because if you want, you can just have the normal new McFarlane base with the nice DC logo there in the foot peg. Or you can add that, which slides in, and so you can have Superman in a flying pose, if you wish. One thing that I will say is that in order to get the trading card and the base out, you do need to destroy the box, unfortunately. Uh, one thing that I like about Hasbro is that their boxes are designed uh, to kind of be opened and reopened. Uh, basically with one slice of tape uh, you can put your figure back in the packaging if you so wish and that's one thing that I've always liked from a collector's standpoint I do prefer to open all my figures anyway so I'm not that upset about it but it is something that I believe is worth noting about the new McFarlane stuff now one of the most notable things right off the bat at least in person is the scale of this superman uh unfortunately the uh, mcfarlane line is all going to be seven inches and i'm not really sure why since they acquired the license from mattel who always did six inches i'm not sure why they wouldn't want to keep everything distinct maybe they thought they could sell more at a different scale but, I mean, most popular figures uh, tend to sell at 6 inches, and so, yeah. That being said, in comparison to the sculpt alone, this is one of the very last Mattel Superman figures ever made. And so you can see there, like, the McFarlane Superman has about a head on... The Mattel one which makes sense being an extra inch but sculpt alone is already a significant improvement uh, the awkward hip joints there are completely gone there and articulation on the McFarlane one is going to be much better 
I'd also argue that the face sculpts on each is in there. I'd argue the McFarlane one is a significant step up from what Mattel gave us. Uh, one thing I will say about the McFarlane one is the cape is like fantastic. It is a hard plastic cape, but it's sculpted very nicely. I've heard a lot of people complain that there's no S on the back. I'm... that's not the biggest deal in my opinion. I would not dock points or anything because it didn't have the S on the back, but I know a lot of people are upset by that. Personally, for me, I think it still looks fine. I, I think it works great. Now, to go back to scale a little, he does tend to scale more with, like, Marvel's Diamond Select series than uh, the Hasbro Marvel Legends line. So, the good news is, if you collect these figures, and if you've been collecting these figures for a while, then the McFarlane ones will line up nicely with it. With that in mind, even the more recent DC Essentials wave, which are still above scale, like, in my opinion, Brainiac should never really be shorter than Superman, but here they are. Now these are, uh, they generally run 6.75 inches on average, so there is that, McFarlane is just a big wave. Um, but that's one of the main criticisms uh, against this new wave, uh, at least right out of the gate. And it is something that I kind of agree on. Like, even if they wanted to keep a uh, six inch scale, like if they were worried about, oh, everyone already has a six inch Superman, why would they buy ours if it's at six inches? Like, it it's Superman, people are gonna buy it. Like. It's also a significant improvement from everything Mattel did, and so, like, it, for such an upgrade, like, I, I, I'm sure people would still love to buy it at 6 inches. Now, in regards to the sculpt itself, I'm actually very impressed with this Superman figure. Uh, I've heard a lot of people complain that he looks really skinny in the arms and the legs, and I guess I can see where they're coming from, but I would disagree. I think he's very nicely proportioned. His hands look about the right size. If anything, he might be a little skinny in the legs, but it's not anything that's like super noticeable, at least in my opinion. Uh, so I'm pretty impressed with the sculpt. The face actually strongly resembles, or at least like, one of the most generic looking versions of Superman, and I applaud McFarlane for that. Uh, but I think where they really succeeded is in the cape. Uh, it is a hard plastic cape, uh, obviously it's got a little bit of flexibility there, but I think just the design and pattern on the back gives it a really nice flow. Um, the company apparently prides themselves on the way they do capes for their figures, and I can definitely see why. Uh, I feel as though their Superman just really, really kind of like pops. Uh, I have heard people complain that there's no yellow S shield on the back of the cape, and personally that is just not a deal breaker for me. Um, I really don't care if it is or isn't there. Uh, the way I display Superman, he's facing the front, not the back, and while I understand that'd be a nice little detail to include, it really doesn't make any difference to me. Now, in regards to the paint, I actually think he's pretty well painted. Uh, nothing really bleeds into anything else. All the skin tones on the hands and the face match. Um, if anything, there's a little bit of blue that bled kind of onto his neck there, uh, but it's not super noticeable. I guess my biggest complaint is in how shiny his hair is. I don't know why McFarlane felt the need to make it so shiny. Um, it 
at least to me, looks like he's got just so much product in it and that he might as well be from like the 50s or something. But again, it's not a huge deal. It's not a, like gonna ruin the figure. I just, it's surprisingly glossy in my opinion. But I do think they did a really good job with the S shield. Uh, I feel like it really pops and just kind of stands out against the rest of the figure. They use a nice shiny red in comparison to the other reds on the costume, and it just really kind of draws attention to what it should, which is the centerpiece and the symbol of hope. Now, as far as articulation goes, he's definitely much better than the stuff Mattel gave us. Uh, some of the added features are the wrist swivel. It's, it is a ball joint, and so you can have his wrist go any which way you want rather than just the old, like, back and forth like you got with Mattel. Uh, he has the same thing down here in the ankles, which is nice. They are, like, uh, I guess, like, perforated in the sense that you have to have them and, like, that you can feel them click as they move up and down so they could probably be a little smoother but at least they kind of match hasbro in that regard although i do feel as though hasbro's got it a little bit better at least in the ankles because they have the nice like back and forth and up and down and you can't see that joint uh, mcfarland did decide to add toe joints this time as well uh, in my opinion that makes absolutely no difference. I almost never use a toe joint, so as long as it kind of like locks firmly in place as a flat piece there, then I'm satisfied. I know some people prefer to have it there, uh, others don't. I really don't care. Uh, he does come with a pretty good neck swivel. His head could go up a little better. But it goes down pretty decently. There are better neck joints for figures out there, but for a $20 figure, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. And then... He's got some butterfly shoulders, which offer a little bit of range there, but really not a whole lot. Uh, but it's better than nothing, and then his arm can still go up, and he's got a shoulder joint right there uh, that actually blends in really well. Like, you kind of really can't see it unless you're looking at it from the sides. Um, he does have two ab crunches, one right at the belt there and one at the torso. The one at the belt, at least on my figure, is super tight and really hard to notice, but if you work it the right way, you can get it. Um, but I'd say really the biggest disappointment about this figure is in the elbows. We once again have a single jointed Superman, and normally this wouldn't be a big deal, Mattel, like, didn't give any of their figures double jointed elbows until like the very end and even then only like two or three figures did have it uh but what's surprising is every other figure in wave one of the mcfarland line with the exception of the animated series ones have double jointed elbows i don't know why they thought they couldn't put them on superman uh and NECA found a way to work make a double jointed superman work and it, I have a hard time seeing how it would hinder any aesthetic, but that's probably what they thought. So I feel like if anything, they could have improved on that aspect. But aside from that, the articulation is actually really good, especially for a $20 figure. You know, McFarlane used to charge way more for figures that were less posable. And so for something that is 20 bucks, I'm very, very pleased to have this. And that's about everything I can think of to tell you guys about it. Um, uh, if they made it six inches, I think I would like this figure so much more. Um, but considering it's McFarlane's first go at it, I think this is a super strong start. 
I can't wait to get my hands on the other figures in the wave, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they have. Uh, so, I mean, for $20 especially, I think this is a super strong start. I definitely say it's worth your money, and while it's not a perfect figure, it's definitely one of the better Superman figures on the market, in my opinion. Uh, the only other thing I think they could note is a few more hand accessories and probably like some alternate heads. Uh, a lot of people like Superman smiling, but I also think it's kind of cool when people give like a super like pissed off, like ang just angry Superman. So alternate hands and heads could probably be utilized, but uh, considering how you'll pay more for a DC Essentials figure and get almost no accessories, if any, uh, this is a pretty good start. And that's about everything we have for today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to click like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again real soon.